been creating lots of brushes, so it's starting to get overwhelming. So I just need to start. Start uh, simplifying it. If you guys have questions, now is the time. I have one question, if I can start first. Yeah, go for uh, it. Uh, how to, uh, what's the best way to learn from studies? Because sometimes I just learn uh -huh. that I copycat like a fool without <laughs> learning anything sure. and I want to avoid it. So. Yeah, okay. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna drink something real fast. Give me a second. Ah, delicious. So, uh, when it comes to studying, the best strategy is to just test rapidly. That's it. You know? Okay. Um, yeah, let me show you an example. I've been studying uh, blender a lot and I'm always learning something new in blender and I'm starting to get real real good at blender um, so let's talk about something that I've been learning that I really enjoy uh, which is something called shape keys so let's let's make something Just make something cute, little cutesy thingy. Let's uh, change this to 0 0.05. Now we can go lower than that, 0 0.025. Okay, so now that we got like something, like let's say some sort of cool shape here. All right, let's put some details. Decrease strength. Let's remove auto smooth. So uh, I'm learning shape keys. If you don't know what that is, that is totally fine. That is outside of the scope of this class. You are not expected to know what that is. But this is a good example of me learning. So I would create like something like this, like really quickly. Okay. You know, I'm like, all right, I'm trying to like learn something. So I don't really care about the quality, but I do want to like make it good enough that it's something I can work from. Okay. Hmm. So something like this. I'm almost there. Like. Okay. All right, so let's say this is something I like. Hey, what's up? So then I learned about like shape keys, so we can go to um, I believe it's here. Yep. Uh, so then what we can do? This is the basic one. That's the base version, and then we'll put this at put this at one. And then I'm going to do something like this, you know? Yes, he's very happy. And then you, you'll see it's doing that. Wow. Wow. It works. Uh, <coughs> yeah, and so then okay. I, uh, but that's one part of the test. The other part of the test will be, put this at one. And then do like something like this. <laughs> right? And let's see what it does there, right? Cool. Okay. But then like let's see what happens when they're both on. Cool. Um, but I'm like, okay, well, what if I wanna like only um only pull back just the smile part of it. And I want to like increase the wrinkles here. You 
you know? So it goes, yeah. <laughs> it's like a creepy smile, right? <laughs> 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 right? Anyway, um, but then if we go to here and then we make, let's say, raise this, these eyebrows. And again, just create some wrinkles. And then let's make a, let's put this down to zero. Let's put this down to zero. And then let's make one that's angry brows. And this is, by the way, what they do actually in a lot of animations. They'll do some, but this is called blend, blend shapes. I'm using shape keys, but they're essentially the same. So they are like the keyframes? Yeah, they form your model. So I can do that and then I can be like, and then, <laughs> all right. And what happens when we do happy and angry at the same time, <laughs> you know? Okay. And so you can kind of control your facial animations and key them and do all that kind of stuff. But nice. um, I'm testing it out I'm, and I'm trying different things. You saw I was just manipulating this and I'm trying changing that. So my studies are always guided by some sort of agenda. I'm trying to like learn something. So let's say you're trying to learn materials, okay. uh, study, you would study the materials and then you try to see if you can actually paint them. So I already did the shape key studies. Like when I go walk my dog, I, I listen to videos and watch videos about, I was watching that stuff and I was like, oh, okay. So even though I wasn't at my computer, I was just like mentally like thinking about it. I was like, okay, like I think I processing can, it. Yeah, I was like, I, I think I know what's going on here. I think I can replicate this when I get home, when I get a chance. Uh, but I had to teach class, so I didn't do it. So I, I actually like quite literally just did the test in front of you. Okay. Uh, somewhat. I would. Uh, there's still some more I want to test, but that's part of it. The second test would be like, could I make a, like a human turn into a monster? That would be pretty cool. <laughs> right and i have some examples of what i would do and i think i understand how i would do it uh, station so there's an artist that i love his name is uh yusuki yusuki ishikawa <clears throat> And he did this thing that I remember watching a long time ago that I was just like, sick. See that? Wow. <laughs> and I'm just this like, This looks like huge cool. amount of work. He's really good. Is he available for work? I should ask him. <laughs> uh, but here, I'll send you guys his stuff. He's got a lot of really cool 3D stuff. I like him too because you can actually see them. Um, so there would be ones that could say Marmoset Viewer. And you can hit play here and you can actually look at it. Like up close. It's really cool. Just got to wait for it to load. It takes a minute. See? And we can go full screen. And we can rotate it. Can you guys see, see it? Yes. See how I like getting those brains, you know? <laughs> it's super cool. But if like you're learning modeling, like this is what I was doing. I was like looking at this, like I was like aggressively studying it. Okay. I'm not sure how he actually modeled this. Because there's part of me that thinks he just did it automatically, like, because it's so crazy. But there's also part of me that's like, but he, like, modeled these wrinkles of skin. That's like something you have to do by hand, the way that looks. Right. So I don't know if he did, like, half and half, 
and then just subdivided it. Fucking, I don't know, dude. He's so good. <laughs> He's really good. He's a very good modeler. I'm starting to fall in love with modeling uh, a lot. Um, so I can show you like a character that I've been modeling for my personal project. So I built this model. Like this kind of like creature, but it's really dark. Let's put it in the light so you can actually see the materials. <laughs> so I've been getting into it, you know. And this isn't uh, perfectly modeled. I use auto, auto topology where Yosuke Ishikawa does not, but I'm not as good as him, so fuck that. But it's still, but it's still, um, it's still uh, impressive, especially for someone like me who isn't uh, a a skilled character modeler. That I'm like starting to learn how to become a good character modeler. Um, and this is like rigged, like this is posed. If I go to armature you'll see here see see like that's his his default pose yeah he pose or a pose <laughs> anyway sorry <clears throat> in blender uh, I sculpted it in 3d coat and then brought it okay. into zbrush for retopologizing and then brought it into blender so a whole thing. I use really three tools. Uh, I could probably do it all in Blender. I haven't tried yet. Uh, it's just that 3D coat's really powerful. <coughs> so I don't really bother. Actually, I want to do something a little bit more. Something that's a little bit more crazy. Anyway. Um, any other questions? Uh, yeah, I've been having a lot of issues with lighting. So I was wondering cool. if you have, uh, if you have, a, a like, a a good, like, exercise or learning methods specifically about um yeah studying lighting in uh i guess different scenarios um yeah you know that's the thing you know uh lighting isn't actually as challenging as people may think it is uh and the way that you would study lighting is as you would probably think you know light cubes spheres what have you you know uh and then try one light, two light, three light, you know? The thing about lighting that makes it hard, and I kind of alluded to it by what I was just saying about like, you know, studying certain forms, uh, like spheres and cubes, is that it's about the forms. You see that people don't struggle with lighting, people struggle with forms. Do you understand where I'm going with this? yeah okay so like so if you're having a hard time lighting stuff it's not that your lighting is wrong it's that your forms don't make sense like you don't know how to you don't know what forms you're lighting like you don't know if it's a cube or a sphere that you're lighting you're just kind of like lighting whatever the hell you think it is does does this kind of make sense like where i'm getting with get going with this like when people think about lighting, and it's going to be mirrored right now, what you're going to see, so just ignore that mirroring aspect of it. I guess it's not because it's being covered. Like if I were to show you this cube, right? And I said, you know, and the light's coming from the top, like what side of the cube is lit? Hey, right? It's not like a trick question. Yeah. So you, you understand that, 
You know what I mean? Like most people do. But what ends up happening is that people tend to like not see these forms and they just see a shape and then they render like the shape. Do you see kind of the problem here? And then they'll like light it as if it's like a shape, like just like this 2D shape. Okay, okay. Yeah, I get it. You know? But that's because you you don't know what actual form you're dealing with. Now, obviously, this cube is a little much like it's really simple subject to to kind of wrap your mind around like this concept. So I, I get I get like most people will be like, Yeah, well, that's obvious. But like I'm like saying, like, okay, well, what about that? Like, I'm not putting any coordinates of any kind. So how do you like this? So when people are like, oh man, I'm having a hard time. Like it just looks super flat, right? Or whatever the heck they think this is. You know, they like render it on every corner, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like, what's the actual form, right? And if you just like do like a little bit of like what I did before with the cube, but instead of thinking of this as a cube, we think of this like an oblong shape. Or, oh, well, obviously the light's gonna hit like right here and probably get a lot of this surface. And then it's gonna start falling off here because it's a curved surface until eventually it starts to just be a much more uh, darker value. And then the side is gonna be in shadow, right? Like you know that, right? Like you would, you, you can understand that. But the problem is that you don't see that. You don't see the form. And so since you don't see the form, you just don't know what's going on. And it, it just feels like a mess. Uh, and it feels like lighting is the problem, but in reality is you don't understand your forms. You know? Yeah, I actually recognize uh, some of that. Uh, when yeah, you if you like, yeah, if you start looking at your work more like, scru like scrutiny, like with more scrutiny, you'll be like, oh yeah, I'm doing this a lot. Like I don't actually know what form that is. And yet I'm trying to figure it out with just pure lighting. Like lighting is only revealing form. Do you understand? Like that's yeah. all light does. It just reveals form. It just shows us what light is bouncing off of and going into our retina, right? It's just information about the objects around us, you know? And so it's less about lighting um, when people have this problem. Now, now with all that being said, lighting is a tool to make things look good, okay? Like, uh, like staging, like what makes things pop out and more appealing. Right. Whenever I was sculpting uh, in the early stages of my career, one of my sculpting friends told me, he's like, when you're sculpting, you should think about how the light is hitting your sculpt as part of your design. Right. Because he said, you know, when you paint, you just do it in intuitively. Because I think painters, that's all you guys, that's your tool. It's like you're using lighting. Right. And um, to like describe your forms so that you turn your, two-dimensional image into a three-dimensional image. So it's like always on your mind to do it like intuitively, right? He's like, but a 3D, when people go into 3D, even the most experienced painters, they don't think this way. All of a sudden they, like, they just like leave it at the door. And then their 3D stuff looks like gelatinous, you know, like very bumpy, you know? Yeah. And uh, when he told me that, I was like, oh my God, you're right. And then, and then so I started thinking in planes and like form more aggressively in the, in the perspective of like when, um, when I uh, think of design, it's the same way, right? And so then, um, so even when you saw me doing, let me, uh, <clears throat> let me hop into 3D code instead actually. Let's jump into another 3D program. So when you when you have like a sphere like this or something, right? And people will start to sculpt, which is totally reasonable. Uh, I actually try not to smooth too often. I actually use this kind of like planar tool to smooth with. Right. Instead of using just like the smoothing, I use that as more of a detail oriented strategy rather than a foundational one, you know? Yeah. And it's for the reasons that I just explained earlier. Like I'm about looking for those, those planar shifts, you know, and I'll smooth 
if I feel like it's necessary, but smooth is like uh, more of like a detail oriented strat for me. You know, like I try to get those planar shifts. In fact, I use like tools that like literally cut my sculpt. to get those planes. And then I use, again, this chisel Yeah, it gives you more texture. Uh, but but see, that's the the thing. Again, your I think your your mind is in the more of the the T series stuff. I'm the texture is a, a byproduct, and I'm going to use it absolutely. But I'm not focused on texture. I'm focused on these planar shifts. You know? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right, because that's what's actually going to be uh, lit. Hold on, let's let's change the material here. Let's do. Say something like this. So then I look at adding a light source and I look at how this looks. You know? Like how that's gonna yeah. look, you know, versus the details. Right? Like looking at those light sh and shadow shapes that are being constructed. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. That's what matters to me. Because that's what I'm. That's what matters to me in in two D. It's the same principle. Make sense? Oh yeah, totally. So uh, even in three D, it's about the forms, right? Like quite literally, it's about the forms in three D. But like, I think people don't realize that even when they're in three D, right? They they sculpt like very gelatinously, right? Like we like not this guy. This guy's not doing that. <laughs> but like, if we think of like three D sculpts and go to images and just kind of like, yeah, here you go, perfect example. See like how everything's just like, yeah, look at this. Like they put the eye, that's the eyes, nose and mouth, you know, but there's no structural form. You see that? Like it's just all lumpy, you know? Like yeah. the features are there, you know? But there's no, strong structural form. And then when you look at really good sculptors, let's type in Geo Mac Kill, one of my favorites, Mac Pill. One of, the, one of the legendary ones. Like you could see he has strong structural form. People will get caught up in the detail, like always. Right, but when we look at some of his early, like like rough sketches, you can see he's all about that form because his rough sketches look already done, right? But that's kind of the point that uh, makes my artwork look good too is because I focus on the found foundational stuff, you know? What makes things look good uh, in terms of its hierarchy. And right now it's always like the shapes and the forms, right? Those are like the big things. Get those right and then everything else comes right after. So going back to kind of your point about lighting, like focus less on lighting, practice your understanding of forms. All right, yeah. Good exercises for that. Uh, going back to kind of your original question is yeah, just, just, just do lighting exercises of simple forms and make that stuff look three-dimensional, right? Like try to render a cube. Like if you can't make a scene of cubes, cylinders, and and cones look believable. What chance do you have to make like a full character look believable? You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Like if you're having a hard time making that stuff look like a three dimensional image, like what are you doing? Like why are you? It's like uh, you 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 jog like a quarter of a mile and then you go try to do the marathon. <laughs> you know, it's like no, you got to do some genuine training. Um, that's one way. Another good strategy is actually drawing forms, like drawing in line art, just drawing forms in different perspectives and seeing them, you know? Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, of course.
<coughs> Any other questions? My, uh, in, in later news, my, uh, my freelance stuff, like I've been getting approached quite a bit by like a lot of people just recently in this last week, I got approached by three different studios for work. It's pretty crazy and they're big. This is, this is unheard of. Last year, I think I was getting uh, opportunities once every other month. The year before that, like three or four times a year, just out of nowhere. And they were pretty good opportunities, really big ones that paid very well. And now it's like starting to get like once or twice a month, which is crazy. And all I've been doing is nothing. I have somebody to help me post stuff on YouTube. And I have hundreds, if not thousands of images just floating around in, in, on the internet. So that's, I think that's been helping me get these numbers. <laughs> Made me realize I need to post more artwork. All right, uh, I think I got a question. If no one, if no one has any better one. <laughs> Nobody's uh, saying anything. You got it, the floor is yours. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to teach someone how to draw. Like just get them started into drawing. And awesome. Yeah. So it's pretty interesting to to watch like from outside <laughs> i gotta say that and i already already like took care of the because they're like complete beginner like 100 percent just begin but i already took care of like the their line quality i guess oh cool like i i made sure that they're they're not chicken scratching or, or anything like that they i made them do a lot of like line exercises so they won't have the problem like later on but i'm wondering like if you have some advice for me to, to teach that person, like what should I as someone who's teaching that person focus on? So um, one of the things that I would say is um, if someone is having a hard time understanding your what you're trying to teach them, uh, one of the big things I learned as an instructor is just patience. Yeah. There's this really funny TikTok video. Um, I can't find the original version of it, but like, if I find it, I'll share it with you guys. But like, it's super funny. It makes me laugh every time I watch it. It's about how uh, a father is trying to, like, there's someone, this, this is like a young lady who's pretending to be her father uh, when he was trying to teach her math right yeah and it's just so funny because he's like okay you have five apples i take two apples away how many apples do i have and then like the little kid is like papa you got two apples you take two apples you got two apples <laughs> and then he's like where are you getting two from huh where is this number coming from and it's like, and it's just like, it just keeps doing that joke. And it's just like, uh, really funny because it just shows how impatient parents can be with their kids, especially when it comes to like math. And interestingly, I'm also like, I'm very impatient uh, at times with my kids when it comes to that stuff. Um, but then what usually helps me get back to teaching them is like, okay, let's start over. Like, where are they at? You know? And, um, and being more patient. You know, uh, I'm highly skilled at doing this with art because I've been doing it for so, quite a while. So I could see how with my kids, I, I wasn't doing a good job. But the point I'm trying to make here is that like, you know, uh, a lot of people will spend a lot of their time um, assuming what the student would know. And so you just gotta like remove that, okay? Uh, and be very, very patient. And once you start doing that, it's, it's much easier to kind of help people out. So for instance, like they'll say they're drawing a straight line, mm -hmm. like that's an exercise and they, they do it and it's just like God awful, the line that they've drawn, you know? Yeah. Then instead of being like, dude, like I just showed you, like you got, this is like, you <laughs> yeah. know, 
you you got to be like okay why did they draw it wrong like got it um like what what is it about them not understanding what i said um and you start you just start to be introspective like you start thinking about what you said and how you said it you you start mm -hmm. thinking about like what is it that they don't know that i know and when you start to do that you start becoming really good at understanding your own approach uh, a good example of this for me was like, I used to tell people, like people would ask me like, what are you thinking about? This is something that is a common question that I'm asked. Mm -hmm. Like, what were you thinking about? What were you thinking about when you were doing this? Like, what was on your mind? What was on your mind? You know? Um, and I'm just kind of like, uh, not, uh, oh no, at the beginning I was like, oh yeah, this is what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about that. And I had all these things that I thought I was thinking about. And then people would then paint and they, because they're not thinking about that stuff, they can't execute or they're like, oh, it's so hard to think about all this stuff. And they're just like, like, I can't do it, you know? Uh, and I started recognizing that with people and I was like, wait a minute, like, like, am I actually thinking about these things? Like, am I truly like thinking about shape design, like right now as I'm painting this, you know? And I realized like, no, actually I'm not, I'm not really thinking about anything, <laughs> you know? And I was like, wait a minute, if I'm not thinking about anything, then what's happening here? And then that's when I started discovering that it was less about me thinking about stuff, right? It was more about me having strong foundational information just embedded in my subconscious. And I was like, is that true? Is that, how is that true? It was like, is there any other example that I can think of that makes that true? And I started thinking about like walking and it's like walking. I don't think about walking and it's like, okay, well, why is walking so in, ingrained in my psychology or in my subconscious? And that's why I started thinking about like just the amounts of years of doing walking. Right. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. I, I think I started to see a correlation here. And I was like, is this true for other things that I've done? And, and that's when I learned how to juggle. I think we talked about that. Right. Yeah. And, and I was like, now nah, this is definitely a thing. And I don't think a lot of people actually recognize this, you know, because I think a lot of people look at art as magic, but I'm like, yeah. I started to un, un, like take off the veil of its magicness. And, and then when I started changing my position to this, uh, it's more, way more patient, way more empathetic because now I'm like, well, there's a reason why this person can't do this because they don't have a strong foundational subconscious built in skill. So I need to focus on teaching them to get good at that. And the more that started to happen, when I started my, seeing my students doing this, like, you know, we just saw that with uh, Nina, she's just practicing and she applied it. And if she just keeps this up over many years, it's just gonna be ingrained, right? Mm -hmm. And so my hypothesis becomes less of a hypothesis, it becomes a theory, which is supported by facts, you know? And in this way of teaching, I found actually is a more useful advice it's not, not diluting the problem like it's not i'm not trying to cr create delusion in my students about like you should be thinking about it. like it's like no 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 it's it's a it's acquired taste like it's an acquired skill you know to be able to draw what seems to be impossibly fluid like without any challenge you know yeah. and i'm like you can do it because i know you you already know how to do something like this like walking Walking is incredibly hard to do when you first learn how to do it. I know this because I have children and I've seen them all try to learn how to walk and they were all bad at it. You know, they're still kind of bad at it. They're still young, <laughs> you know, they're still like tripping all over themselves, right? And so that's when I started realizing that that's like an actual thing, you know? Um, so that's the same with uh, any person you become your student of yours, you should have the same kind of approach. Like, it's okay that you as a teacher will get things wrong. And if you do, you have to acknowledge them. Right. And then call it call it out be like I was wrong about when I told you this. Yeah, this is actually a better way of thinking about it. And yeah, then it's... and then people will respect you actually better as an educator. Yeah, it's been a journey with this person because like you said, I have, like, I don't know uh what they don't know because it's been so long for me already it's been like yeah many 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 years 
So there's a term for this, I believe. It's called like the mastery's bias. Uh -huh. um, I think that's what it is. Well, let me double check. Mastery bias. There's a bias, um, or teacher bias. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to work off of mastery bias. I don't know what the actual term is specifically, or the phrase is off the top of my head, but it's, I've been calling it mastery bias. So I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, it's essentially, <coughs> it's essentially a very simple premise that, um, that when you are more proficient, right? The advice you give at that stage of proficiency tends to have a bias because yeah. because you're at a different level so for instance when i was talking i'll use the example i talked about earlier like when i said that i um uh, oh yeah i'm thinking about this i'm thinking about that and like i had all these things that i said i was thinking about right that's my mastery bias because those are true like i did at some point think about these things as uh, as things that i should really be focused right. on but it's not true in terms of the development of getting there right there's a yeah. there's a different strategy in terms of how to get to where i'm at that's what the person was asking technically they're not asking me the literally like what am i thinking about um or i'm sorry they are literally asking me what i'm thinking about but what they really want to hear is how i got there that's what they really need to hear not so much the exact answer because again it will create a false delusion You know, that they, they need to now do that too, to be able to draw as good as me. And then they, they don't know why, when it's not happening, why it's not happening for them. And that's when they start to get driven by insecurities and start to feel bad. Because they're like, well, Anthony Jones can just think about this stuff and I can't. Right. <laughs> and it's like, no, they're like, I couldn't either. And that's the part that the, the mastery <laughs> bias... I keep making this guy's face too cute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like trying to make it more vicious and it's just getting cuter. He's like, Rawr. yeah, I think it's just this mouth. I need to like change the scale of the mouth. Um, I started fundam fundamentally too cute. That's the problem. Anyway, hopefully this gives you some. Uh... Yeah, it's actually very very helpful all right Thanks. cool yeah man this is why i think my class is more successful than most because i meet people where they're at as well yeah man, i can i can tell you without a doubt you're probably the best teacher i've ever had like in any in any much field. appreciated dude much appreciated appreciate those kind of words trying dude trying to be helpful to the masses yeah man uh any other questions i could take a couple more before i have to head out like i said i've been got a lot of works yeah cute chicken <laughs> it, it did look like a chicken that was not my intentions though, so that's why I had a little backtrack. Any other questions before I call it? I kind of have another one if no one else wants. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll give a, people a count to five. Five. All right. Actually, oh. I was wondering oh. how we... All right. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just... It, it's a fast one, probably, I'm guessing. Sure, but we'll find wondering out. wondering how will the class change after our group, since we're officially oh, sure. the last group of this format. <laughs> so, so normally I meet up twice a week. I'm probably going to change it to once a week, okay? Now, I strongly believe that twice a week works really well, but I think uh, I've come to learn that if I just uh, create even more effective instructional videos, 
uh, I think uh, I can avoid some some misunderstandings. I think it's still going to be a thing. But I after this many, I think I know what I could say, and I know what's been said that usually gets people on the ticket. That works really well. Like basically, their first submissions and their the, the next stages of submissions. Uh, because a lot of what I do is paint overs and a lot of that's the same kind of stuff. Like there's just some stuff that I just don't need to keep explaining, you know, over and over to each and every student. Like what I, I think I need to do is just change the class to what it really has the most value, which is like the Q and a sections, I think have a lot of value. So that should still be a thing, but also, um, just like giving individual advice and getting, make sure people like are hearing that individual advice. And then I could be like, I could point them to like, uh, I could do like a quick paint over and then be like, okay. So, so for instance, you guys were talking about lighting. I mean, like I have like a whole video about that. Like go watch that video, it's here, right? Or, hey, I have like a whole video about anatomy. It's right here. Here's a whole video about proportions is right here. Here's a whole video about like, you know, like fundamental stuff. Oh, here's a design one, you know? So that way I don't have to keep repeating myself, you know? I can just keep like, like I can have like a very strong resource for these like one off um, points, but then I can be like uh, in the class, be more like answering questions, you know, doing more demos, right? Um, and then also the paint overs that I do, like I said, will be a little more uh, like, I'll just show you how like me, me making these changes are effective and then i'd be like go watch video found in the design section you know and uh that way it'll be more explicit about what i was doing here and you can just rewind it watch it again over over and over you know uh and then i'll give you very specific homework about like that's part of your homework is to watch those videos right but what i'll do is i'll i'll kind of keep them locked uh after the first class and then i'll, I'll open them up again you know like, so okay. let's say the yeah. first day that we meet, like, you know how to have you guys work over the weekend and then we meet and then I'll give you the critiques, but then I'll be like, I'm unlocking all these videos for you guys to watch now, all right? You guys can watch at your own leisure, but I'm, I didn't have them open in the beginning because I didn't want you guys to, I, I might have them open in the beginning. I might just put it on the website, like don't uh, watch based off of, you know, uh, instruction. So then it's more like, because I think what ends up happening too is a lot of people will like even like look through the catalog of videos that I have and still have a hard time knowing which ones they want to watch first or ones they should be watching. I yeah. think if I have a class that's just like, that's how I'm instructing you is focusing on personal advice, kind of like what we're doing right now. You know, like you guys ask me questions, I I'll give you answers. I like you guys, you guys' work, I give you feedback. Uh, I try to motivate you guys and stay positive. I kind of get your uh your frame of thinking more effective and then and then just the the meetups are just more about accountability like hey you know uh this is the kind of work i expected you to have today did you do it okay great let's talk about it all right uh and if i want to test it out i think it will work, be pretty good and if the worst case scenario if i find that no the old model still is better uh those videos will still be pretty helpful you know i could still use that approach but i do think i could do it that way and if I do that and I have like less, like if I only meet once a week, uh, I can extend the class maybe. Like I can make it a six week course instead of a four week course. I can also uh, add, I can remove the class price to like from 500 to like something like $300 or even half that, you know? And then I can bring in more students, right? Uh, so yeah. instead of like 10 or 10 to like, uh, like uh, eight to 10, I can bring in um, closer to like uh, 15 to 20, you know? I've had that actually in the very beginning of my classes. I used to have 15 students and those classes were wild. Uh, that's, there's a reason why I reduced it, but I, that was because I had this format and it was just like, there was just no time. Those classes were easily four to five hours long, you know? Oh, wow. um, because, you know, I was always trying to give really helpful feedback, but that's because again, uh, I would give you the advice there and then, you know, and I didn't have like a place where I can offload these kind of, like I did, there's just some things I just say over and over again that I'm like, and I've done it for so many years that I'm like pretty confident I know what those are now that I can just make them a, a piecemeal video 
collection and just point you in the right direction. And again, we, we would meet up more as a, an accountability challenge and for you to ask answer questions or ask questions that are really more specific to your problems, right? Uh, and really lean in on the personal trainer aspect of it versus um, some sort of art instructor, right? Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, that way it'd be more affordable too, like $300, 250 is much, much more affordable. Um, and then I think it will be just as good of a class. It might even be better. Uh, it depends on how well I make those intru in instructional videos. But like the whole idea is like those videos would be like five minutes, you know, like, they'll be really quick, like easy to digest videos, you know? Uh, and then I'll do stuff like, you know, hey, you know, um, we can uh, have these little sub challenges that you can do when I talk about studying, like I'll have examples of what that would actually mean, you know, more effectively, like I'll give like a really laid out example. The reason why I've never done this is because it takes a lot of work to build that, right? It's just much easier to just tell you in person. But I'm looking at this in the long haul, I'm like, I was like, no, nah, it's it's a good investment to do it up front. And I didn't know what those videos should have been in the past, right? Anyway, but like yeah. I said, I've been doing this for so long. I'm like, I'm feeling pretty confident that I can make like a series of like a dozen videos that will pretty much encompass every strong fundamental point that I will make in the class, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think people will be able to like, uh, kind of like go to those videos based off of per instruction. And again, a personal trainer makes sense, like, right? Like if you, let's say you are weaker in chest, like your chest isn't as strong, you know, a personal instructor could probably spot that or maybe your diet's not on point, they could spot that, right? Versus maybe you didn't know that. Like you're probably, you, you know, you're like, hey, you know, like I'm having a hard time like getting my calorie count up and I'm like reducing my carbs. But, oh, you know, you can like, you can keep eating carbs, just eat these foods like beans are heavy on carbs, but also low in calories. You know, that's like that's the kind of thing that like a more poignant, like a more well-trained individual can do for you when it comes to like training, right? Uh, and that's what I want to do. I want to be more like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, instead of just like, this is how you paint a circle in every class, like every class I'm like, work on your proportions, work on your proportions. They're gonna be like, no, go here. Like, here's a regimen on how to fix your proportions. Uh, and I'm saying that you need your proportions to fix. That's your main objective now, right? And then you can go there and watch those videos uh, and then ask questions the, the following class if you ran into any problems. Okay, cool. So that will be the main difference. Uh, it would still be pretty much the same, but just imagine how the Q&A class runs. That's how the main class would be, right? Where we do quick like review. I give you some feedback. I'll do like maybe a quick pan over if I, I think it's important, right? but I'll guide you to an actual video on my actual site to go watch uh, and your own, at your own pace. You know, you can watch it over and over again and it's like, you don't have to scrub through a whole two or three hour video to remember what I said to uh, student X, you know, that you were like, oh, he said something really good to that one person, you know? Cause I know yeah. uh, most people do not scrub through the videos like that. I know this because there, there's points I repeat over and over. <laughs> and I just like, I just know people aren't going back and listening to what I said, which is fine. It's totally fine. I'm not offended. Sounds, sounds really cool. You, you just sold me another course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be good. And I think I'm going to switch up the mentorship part to personal trainer, like call, like literally say, uh, your artistic personal trainer. Nice. And I think people, when they hear that, they'd be like, tight. Uh, I actually coined the mentorship thing. I don't think it's even a word. <laughs> I just started calling it a mentorship. And then uh, everybody else started doing mentorships. And they started calling it mentorships. Is it really? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, look it up. I don't think it's actually a word. <laughs> Shit. It's yeah, an apprenticeship so is what the thing is. There's not like a mentorship. Like you are apprentice to a mentor. Um, yeah, that's. I should be calling it an apprenticeship. That's weird. <laughs> See <laughs> <But> it everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but now it's like all these schools are starting to call it uh, mentorships. 
uh, art school specifically. And um, but I, I'm gonna watch you. Wa you watch when I change it to personal art, personal trainer. <laughs> oh, you watch. <laughs> Everyone's looking to start calling themselves personal trainers too. I promise you, dude. I'll be looking out for that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I don't care. I, it's just the observation. <laughs> okay? Yeah, I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because like even when uh, I started doing gum roads and everyone else like like the whole gum road video stuff, especially in the art world, like took off because of me. You do really. Yeah, yeah, right? I, I know you kind of started out the whole. Yeah, nobody was doing it. Like people were doing their own like stores and stuff, and it was very like successful for a very few people. But I was like, everybody should do a fucking Gumroad, and Gumroad makes it easy. I remember my buddy John Park. I told him to do it, and he's like, "Oh man, this is tight." And now he has like a whole school, my like brainstorm. And um, but I remember some people were like, also kind of on the defense, or like, "Dude, aren't you afraid like people are going to just steal your ideas and stuff?" And I'm like, "You're you're only afraid if your ideas are being stolen if you don't have good ideas." And so I was like, "I'm good, dude. Don't worry." <laughs> and i was like even even if somebody made another character design class um i teach character design differently than somebody else and as I, and i remember exclusively as as a student when i was a student that i didn't think that way where i was just like oh man i can only watch anthony jones videos no other teacher exists <laughs> you know i was like i didn't think that way when i was uh, becoming good like I looked at everybody I watched several different character design tutorials from several different artists you know mm -hmm. I was about getting those gains man I didn't care who it was coming where it was coming from you know and so I was like it's weird to think that like people will only digest one thing like I have a Netflix Disney plus Hulu uh, what other thing Amazon Prime I have like it's almost like cable television again <laughs> you know yep. like i'm like it, it slowly has become that but this idea that like oh no i will only watch netflix forever and always you know it's like it's, nah, dude. like yeah. i'm i'm watching where the good stuff's at right and right now uh, the good stuff's on um, disney plus with the mandalorian man i love that show oh yeah i watched a few episodes I've, I've actually never watched star wars i don't know why no one no one had ever showed me before and i watched the, the <laughs> mandalorian yeah, man. It's like culturally, it's like in the. I know, I know. I think it's I in know. the Constitution. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think it's it like, might as well be. Yeah, yeah I think it's well like, a, uh, it's also like an immigration thing. Like, it, it's like one of the questions <laughs> to become an American <laughs> citizen. Yeah. Then, like, who, who's Darth Vader? You know, there's surely a series of yeah. pictures. One's like a toaster. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, but yeah, yeah I, I get was, it. It's funny. Yeah. But yeah, man, that show's really, it's really, really cool, man. It's really. a great show. Yeah, it's just a good show, even if you don't know anything about Star Wars. Totally, yeah. I was just thinking that, like, when I was watching these last epi few episodes of season two, I was just like, "This is just a good show." Like, I think if if it didn't have the Star Wars um, trademark, I think it actually would have held up on its own merits. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it does for me. Like Star Wars for me, like you might as well change it for anything else. Like I don't really care about it. But yeah, yeah it's just good. it's just a good show. Um, you had a question. And then, oh, uh, we'll, yeah, we're going to bounce out of here. We'll get out of here. Um, oh, shit. Uh, I did have a question. <laughs> I kind of forgot. Let me let me see. Let me, let me gather my thoughts. Uh, yeah, your thoughts while I'm drinking. <clears throat> hmm. Add another leg in here. It's okay if you can't think of it. We can just end the class as of now. Um, and then if you think about it next time, we, we still do have a, another two classes mm -hmm. so it's not a big deal and one and one in which is like the final q a just maybe write it down if you remember so you don't forget yeah. again um but i'm gonna go ahead oh, and call I, it oh. i remembered <laughs> okay go ahead i just remembered um i can't believe i just forgot god what? damn it <laughs> <laughs> all I'll right be, man all right yeah, even if you remember I'll, as I'll remember closing, next time. Just, i remember just for hold next on time. to it just hold on to it. Right. Even if you remember right as I'm yeah, 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 out of class, yeah. just hold it to yourself. <laughs> Dude, I'm not going to go through this again. I'm traumatized. All right. <laughs> see, see you guys later. <laughs> and, see you you guys have a great weekend. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers. Uh, you too. Cheers. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. 
please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.